All right, let's dive in. This deep dive, it's um, a bit different. There we go. We're just looking at now. Just think But not about just it. for the just laughs. Me. Right. We got a request to like really unpack the nature of reality in that in that Shrek huh. universe. Okay, yeah. And I got to say, at first I was like, ogres and existentialism. But then I went back and I looked at the script of the first movie. Yeah. And wow. I'm seeing things in a in a whole new light now. It is really fascinating how often, you know, like a, like a fairy tale, you know, kind of a simple story right. can actually have these like deeper meanings. Yeah. And with the entire script of that first Shrek film, we've got we've got a lot of material here. So much, yeah. And and right away, the movie it kind of it plays with our expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, you expect that classic fairy tale opening, right? And then. Bam! Shrek just like rips it apart. Yeah, he just tears right through it. What do you What do you think that tells us? Well, I think it really sets the stage for a world where you know fairy tales they aren't just stories; they're like actually part of of everyday life. You know. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, they're not you know like revered; like they're not taken as like gospel truth. It's like fairy tales are just like Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. Like it just it's just part of of life in this world. So so then like. If magic and talking donkeys, like mm -hmm. if that's just like normal, mm -hmm. then then what does that tell us about the Yo! rules of reality in, in Shrek's world? Well, I think it, it suggests that their reality is, is much more fluid, you know, and, and less predictable than maybe, you know, the one that, that we live in. Uh -huh. And I think it, it raises all sorts of questions about like, you know, what's what's considered normal and how we even like perceive, you know, the world around us. Yeah. And then you've got Shrek himself and, you know, that whole... Ogres are like onions speech. Yeah. It's it's more than just a funny line. Oh, right? absolutely. It feels like he's giving us a like a key insight. Yeah, I think I think he's definitely onto something there. Like how this world works. He's not just talking about personality, right? He's talking about about being misunderstood. And that seems to be like a major theme, you know, throughout the movie. Like judging by appearances. Exactly. Yeah. And we see that like with Shrek, we see it with Fiona and even with, you know, Duloc. Right. Which which seems like so idyllic at first yeah but yeah. but then it's like wait a minute mm -hmm. what's real here and what's what's just a facade good question it, and that kind of leads us to to fiona and and the curse mm -hmm. is that is that just a plot device or is there something like deeper going on there i, I think i think it's um i think it's a pretty powerful commentary on on societal expectations, really. Mm -hmm. You know, her curse, it isn't just about, you know, this physical transformation. It's about, like, this internal struggle she has with mm -hmm. believing that, you know, her her true self, you know, the ogre side, yeah. is actually something monstrous. And, and that scene, you know, in the tower, when she transforms, oh, yeah. it's intense. Like, especially those close-ups they use, uh -huh. it's not played for laughs. No. It's actually kind of creepy. It's kind of unsettling. Yeah. You know, I think I think it really highlights that psychological impact, you know, that that curse has on her yeah. and how how she's internalized this idea that that beauty and, and you know, being a princess yeah. can't coexist with, with this ogre side of her. It makes you wonder, does the curse really come from the witch? Right. Or is it like society's expectations yeah. that are that are just warping how she sees herself that's that's a really good question it it suggests that that maybe the real curse is is like the pressure to to conform to this very narrow yeah. definition of of beauty and worth you know and speaking of like societal pressures mm -hmm. let's let's talk about duloc okay yeah it's presented as this like perfect happy place right right but there's there's something about it that just feels like a little a little off yeah it's it's almost too perfect yeah you know like everyone's doing these synchronized dance numbers yeah. there's this like it's mm -hmm. overly cheery music yeah, yeah yeah it's like like a theme park version of happiness exactly yeah like it's it's manufactured and then you've got that that welcome to deluxe song right as catchy as it is mm -hmm. some of those lyrics are are kind of messed up you yeah, know a little bit like don't make waves stay in line oh yeah yeah it's all about you know conformity and and, and squashing any kind of individuality. Yeah, it's like Duloc is this like satirical, um, kind of exaggerated version of that pressure to like fit yeah. in and just like 
smile and pretend everything's great. Right. Even when it's not. Yeah, even when, when things are, are clearly not okay. And and Farquaad himself. Oh, yeah. He he embodies that. Right. That need for control. He wants everything to be perfect, you know? Yeah. The perfect fairy tale ending, the, the perfect princess, the perfect kingdom. Yeah. And it all has to be, you know, exactly the way he wants it. He even rejects those first two uh, bachelorettes that the that the magic mirror shows him. I know. It's like he's he's shopping for a princess based on this like checklist. Yeah. Instead of like actual connection. It's not about like genuine, you know, feelings or or love. It's yeah. all it's all about appearances and control. Which which kind of brings us to to relationships. Okay. Like look at Shrek and Donkey. Yeah, there there's something else. Their friendship is is a roller coaster. Right. Right. They're they're constantly arguing. They 